assuming that you guys know what a knot is. And so I'm just going to try to keep all of this pretty intuitive. And if you have any questions about anything, you can ask me. Okay. Um, so, so a link of k components is a smooth embedding. we're crossing the <coughs> right? When I say that it has a diagram like this, it means that there, there are potentially many different ways of projecting the knot onto the two planes and getting many, many diagrams. But only finitely will, of them will have this property that it has only finitely many double points. Oh. Okay, so let's An example of this, yeah, or oh, I think, and then we can Okay. All right. So in three-dimensional space, because this is supposed to be a two-dimensional projection of three-dimensional space, what do you think is going on on here? I have three strands, right? Which one is at the very top? Do you think? This one. Okay. And then which one is at the very bottom? It could be right. So so it could be it could be this one, it could be this one. Let's say this one at the very bottom. Right? So this strand is in between. Now I'm just gonna move this strand a little bit so that I don't have this three crossing point anymore. Okay. So what I'm gonna do Hold 
this trend slightly in this direction, right? And that's because I'm sort of saying that in this space, I can sort of visualize there being a plane between these two strands, and I can move these, move the strand a little bit so that it becomes the nice double crossing that we have. Okay. Um, okay. So. This is going to lead into the writer master loops. Which is that a link, k, so I'll, I'll use k and I'll interchange with k, can be smoothly deformed into another link if they're diagrams. So they have diagrams. D and D prime are related by the following three groups. This goes, so this can go both ways, right? So I just get rid of the pink, put a pink back in, okay? Um, and then I have two, um, then I have type three, it's this. Actually represent the same link because it just it's just local smooth deformation. I just pull these strands apart. Um, do that. Um, but the problem is, given any link diagram, it's hard to tell whether they're isotopic just based on those loops. Okay, so here's an example. If I have something, so okay, so so this is what is called the unknot, which is there's no linking, no complicated linking anywhere. Or I can draw another one. This is what's called a trefoil. I'll explain these labels in a minute. Okay. Okay, so can you see, I guess this is sort of like, just, just to make you think about how difficult the subject is, if you try to represent knots and links by diagrams, they are easy to see, but it's, but it's hard to study. So. Is it easy to tell, I mean, whether you can deform this diagram into this one? <coughs> right, so, so another question that I can ask is, maybe I'll keep the door open even though I'm hearing the other side, okay. So, okay, so if you don't think that th these knots, the knots that are represented by these diagrams can be smoothly deforming into each other, can you prove that there are no such moves? That's, that's harder, right? That's also like extremely hard. How do you show that there is no such sequence of local moves like this um, that deforms one knot into another? Okay, so how to tell knots apart? I mean, this could just be a really bad diagram. Okay, so um, here's another example. Uh, this is actually 
the same as the unknot. Which means that if I give you this thing tied in, if, if I give you a diagram that's, this, that's, that's uh, represented by the screen, you can actually continuously pull it apart until it becomes the unknot. Right? But this is not so obvious when you first see the diagram. So if, so I mean, if you can, you can try to untangle this for the rest of the class, but a first thing that you might try to do is simplify the crossings that I have here. Okay, what can I do with this string to, to reduce the number of crossings so I eventually get that on off? So, so, so this is, I mean, I'm presenting only one option, okay? So, so it, I'm presenting an option. It, you, you, might, you might untangle it your, your different way. I'm just saying like that's, that's maybe a good place to start. I can move this over here so that so that I get rid of all of those. Uh, I get rid of these crossings and these crossings that seem to be unnecessary. And then I just continue it until I get the unknot, hoping to keep track of the process. Right? Okay, so so the other fine point I want to say is that I, I for for what I do, I just like swing, I just swing like this strand around over here. But it's kind of amazing that you can actually you can actually sort of dissect that move into little steps that are just like this. Okay, that's that's also an interesting thing to think about. How do you get like broad moves like this to, to come out in little find that even little steps like that. Okay. So right, that's that's the first step of when I'm not even did. Um, and so if you want to study not by by diagram moves, it's gonna take a very long time. Okay. So this here comes a little bit of history, which is that, so Peter Tate was one of the first people to study knots. And he was live in 1869. Okay, so for him, knots were like, Nodded to ether, which ether meant something in physics back then. Anyway, so um, but it was pretty simple to see that you can visualize a knot in terms of diagram. And so the way that he tried to study knots was by tabulating. So start to tabulate. All knots. Okay, what does this mean? Um, it means that, that he wants to give you a complete classification of knots by their diagram. Okay, so this is this is the label. This is three one, and this is four one, um, and then this is the unknot, and then you just go on for every single diagram that you can see. But what do you need to do? So, what do you need to do when you need to when when you tabulate knots using diagrams? How would you sort of generate knots in the first place? I guess I guess that's the question that I want to sort of lead you into. Okay, so so this is like sort of already done. I guess maybe you can first do it, organize them by the number of crossings, right? That seems to be some kind of measure of complexity. Yeah. Okay. Are there any two crossing knots? How do you see that? Are there any two crossing knots that is not the unknot? So, so you can try to draw this, right? So if I have two crossings, and my requirement is that there's only one component, Here, right? And then you need to know 
is this is a little more complicated, that there is only one type of recrossing us up to different uh, deformations of the diagram. And then there's the fourth one. So this is this is this was enormous. I I mean I think um, this was an enormous thing for for Peter Tate to take on, and then there were like many towns. He 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 tried to study not by writing down all their diagrams, and, and sort of later people discovered that this is maybe not like the best way to study not. It, it does help in in some sense that there's some sort of pretty amazing thing you can do with, with these things like this, but. Um, So one of the things that you want to use to study knots are knot and link invariants. OK. And then these are properties unchanged under smooth deformations of the knot. OK, so it could be a number. It could be a polynomial, as we will see. Any property that is invariant for the knot under these continuous deformations. So if I have a number that is assigned to this knot, that is different from the same number assigned to this knot, then I can tell them apart. And then I can prove that there is no such sequence of moves that transforms one into another. Okay. So uh, particularly, invariants that are based on knot diagrams are very useful for studying. Are we working with the assumption that these are the only possible moves that are there? Yes. I think so. Okay. Well, these are not the only possible moves, but every single moves can be, can be written as a finite sequence. Okay. 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 Yes. That, that's proven by randomizer. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the goal is to, to have some kind of invariance on diagrams. And then let's let's just see a few examples. So is the number of crossings an invariant? No, why? Right? Okay, yeah. So I just I increase the number of crossings by doing this, right? Okay. But what about minimum number of crossings over all diagrams D of of it. Well, this is one because it's actually bounded below by zero, right? And there are finitely many diagrams. So this is going to be independent of any diagram that you choose for, for um, the link. OK, so, so I'll, just, I'll just like include another example here about further dimension. So unknotting number, this is the minimum number over all diagrams. that it takes to reduce D to the F naught. OK, what I mean, I just mean how many crossings can I flip? What is the minimum number of crossings I need to flip in order to change a diagram into an unknot not diagram? For this knot, it's just just one, right? So, so now I, 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 have, I have something over here. I can Actually, this is a good demonstration of, of this loop. I can pull the strand over, and then, then I can get rid of the kink using this one. Um, I should also, I forgot, particular this direction, of course. Um, OK. So just one. 
Um, what about this one? So it's just one word? No, okay, good. particular variable could be more than one. Then the question is, how do you prove that it's not one? Right, because there could be a diagram where if you put, if you change the crossing, um, if, if you change the crossing, you just, you just don't know which diagram it is. That would get me used. So these give you, like, these invariants are very important for setting them up, but they're very, very hard to change because they're based on diagrams. Okay. So that's, that's, that's sort of the, the main point I want to drive for the first part, which is that, you know, diagrams are great, but they're also really hard to work with. When Tate was making his knot table, which is probably up to like 100 crossings, and he has to show that each of them is not, sort of each distinct class knots are related, not related by inches, um, he noticed a phenomenon that is known as, that he formulated as a conjecture. So any reduced diagram. of an alternating link has the fewest possible crossings. Okay, so let's take these terms. Um, not so much in order, alternating just means that when I go around the link strand, uh, the link goes over and under, uh, alternately. So so this is an alternating link. I have over, if I follow one strand, it's over and under. If I follow the other strand, it's under, over. So it alternates, okay? Um, Let's make this with this trend pull back. This is also an alternating link. Yeah. If I go through a strand, I have over, under, over, under, and then I have under, over, uh, under, over. So it alternates, and this is also an alternating link. Okay. So. Um, Here's an example of something that's not alternating. Okay, and that's because I have this arc right here that when I follow the strand, it actually goes over, over. Okay, and so so sort of sort of the interesting. So just to give you a sense of. Actually, alternating knots are, are sort of very special class of knots. They're not all knots. It can be shown that this particular knot does not have any diagram which is alternating. Okay, so that is, I mean, that's just telling you that, that the alternating knots are not all knots. Okay, so this is a, these are very special classes. <coughs> Much simpler example. Uh, let's say we have a circle with just a loop that goes. It's a, it's, a, it's an unknot, but I just draw it as like a loop like this, right? I still go over and under, right? Yeah. That's right. So that leads to the second thing I, I need to talk about, which is reduce. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, great. Okay. So so that that's very good. This is a, this is a this is a bad example. So um, this diagram obviously does not have the least number of crossings for an unknot. So a diagram is not reduced 
if there exists two um, closed curves, simple closed curves, each intersecting the diagram at exactly two points. I can enclose part of the knot in one circle, one closed curve, simple closed curve, <coughs> and another part of the knot in another simple closed curve, and I just have one thing, one crossing over here. Okay, so the other one also is not allowed. Okay, and what this means is that whenever I see this, I can just flip one side of the diagram to reduce the number of pockets, right? So, so let's see an example. Um, Simple closed curve that we're using to do this. Okay, um, so this is something diagram. There's a very to reduce this number of crossings, you just you just flip it over, right? right? Okay, so this is that condition is designed to get rid of conditions like that would give you diagrams like this. Okay. So you can also see that this is an example of having um, an unreduced diagram. Because I can always, so so the so the reason this is why this is formulated so so formal is because you want to be able to formalize the condition that you have some kind of crossing that you can just flip over. Okay. So so here's here's like one circle, and then I have another circle intersecting all of this, and then I can just reduce reduce the the crossing. reduced alternating diagram, uh, then it has the fewest number of crossings. So remember, crossing number, minimum crossing number over all diagrams is actually numeric. Okay, and this is telling you that there is a way to actually compute this thing when your diagram is alternating. Okay. Um, so this was conjecture there, and <coughs> this was very, very hard to prove until the discovery of the Jones Hall Okay, And this was in 1984 by Vaughn Jones. <coughs> Just on the discovery of this invariant alone, he won the first. So, um, like I said, this is going to be an invariant that is unchanged under sort of simple moves on the diagram. Um, and one of its first applications is proving that this is true. About how many years later? Um, Nineteen eighty-seven. To 869, yeah, it's more than 100 years later after Tate after Tate made that conjecture. Okay. So, um, so this was so proof of Tate's conjecture <coughs> by Morwen Chisel Morisugi. After appearance of the Joe Paul. Okay, so um, goal today is show you how you can prove this old conjecture too. Um, it's kind of amazing that, that it becomes very easy if you have the right invariant. In this case, the Joe Paul. Okay, so how did I find 
find this thing. So um, so V of L find for length is going to be negative A. Uh, okay, so I'll, so I'll explain those terms later. Times the Kelvin bracket. And then I always substitute the variable. And, and the, the substitution of variable is just convention. number, this Kaplan bracket is going to be a, column, a lower polynomial in A, defined recursively. <coughs> so, on the diagram, whenever you just have the unknot by itself, nothing else, it evaluates the one. And then if I have a disjoint union <coughs> of a diagram with the unknot, also on the circle, this is negative a to the negative 2 minus a to the 2 times the value of the bracket on the diagram. Um, and then I have What this means is that I'm going to locally focus on a single crossing, and I'm going to resolve it based on one of these rules. Okay. I'll, I'll do an example where this is not clear. Hopefully not too long. using these rules until I get something that's either just done not by itself or I'm not multiplying something else. Okay, so I can replace everything in terms of the top line. Okay, so I can do this in any order because this, this formula doesn't specify which order, which crossing I need to take first. Um, and th let's just take the first one. So this top, so there's one crossing here and then I have the other one here. Um, and then let's simplify using this rule. Okay, what I'm going to do is locally replace the diagram here by these arcs and then multiply the bracket by A. Okay. So the bracket of this thing is going to be the same as the bracket of A times this bracket of this other diagram. So you, you kind of have to keep simplified. Okay. So, um, okay. So I have one crossing left left for each of them. Then I have to make two choices for each of these two. Okay. So the first one is going to be a a multiplied by another a, and then I have this. <coughs> and then I have I made the other choice. So I have a a oh, a inverse, then I have that, and then I have a a inverse.
And then I'm left with A inverse, A inverse. I'm going to write M of D is the maximum power of A in the bracket. M of D is the minimum power of A in this bracket. And then the lemma is that if D is a diagram
And then I also have MD is greater than or equal to negative N minus 2 S minus 3 plus 2. And both of these are with equality if D is alternating. And reduced. Okay, so this okay. So n is just a number of crosses in the diagram, right? Okay, so s plus d. Um, let's just say this this particular thing that gives me the higher a power is plus a plus choice. This is the minus choice. So then s plus is just the number of circles that you get when you pick plus for every single crossing. Okay. So for this one, it's it's what it's so this is plus, and then I made another plus here. So it's this one. So s plus is just two, okay. Um, and then this one, I have two negative choices here. So then it's also two. Okay. So instead of like doing this really formally, let's let's just see why this might be true. Okay, so the n is because of the this extra factor that you have at the beginning of the bracket, right? So if you're n crossing, then what is the state that you get the maximal a maximal a power? You just add a for every single crossing. You just choose plus for every single one, right? Okay. So that's that's why that's why this one has a to the two, right? And then um, right. So the number of safe circles you have to subtract by two because of that first rule. Okay. And then the last one. What is the way to get minimal a power? It's just by taking all the negative ones, right? So you usually so multiply by the negative. Okay, now the claim, which is not as obvious, is that every single term, all the other terms, the degree is bounded by between this, the degree of this guy and this guy. Okay, because, okay, and that claim is, is true for any, is true for any diagram. So, so let's, let's try to think about why that. So the reason is, for any diagram, you always have the state where you choose the plus red blue in everywhere, right? And this, like, a priori gives you the highest power. Okay. If I choose any other state, what happens to this power? It decreases. So, so this part decreases, for sure, right? This part decreases. What about the number of circles? Can it increase? Can it decrease? For for any diagram. So so let's let's say um, I have any diagram with a pink like this. Okay. Can I choose? So so what? So if I do the the plus state, I'm gonna have whatever number of circles the rest of the diagram has. But if I do the minus state, I'm actually gonna increase the number of circles. Okay, so this means that these other states, that's like a mixture of the plus and minus states, will have degree less than or equal to this one. Does that make sense? Because, because while you decrease this one, you might compensate for it by increasing the number of circles. Okay, but all right, so so that's the first part. This applies for any diagram. How do I make sure? What conditions can I put on the diagram that makes sure that no other state can compete? Well, what is the condition I need to impose on the diagram? So I did mention like this this sign always goes out, right? How can I make sure that any other state <coughs> is not going to have more circles? No, no, there's a law right now in my head. So 
why this implies the conjecture. The conjecture says that if I have a reduced, so this, is, this should all be, I should all have reduced everywhere. The conjecture says that if I have, if, if the link actually has a reduced alternating diagram, then it cannot have any other diagram that has fewer properties. Okay, so given this, where is the contradiction? The key point is that the Jones polynomial is an invariant. Okay. This is a statement. This is a statement. This number is invariant no matter which diagram you pick. Okay. So let's say let's say you have another diagram. E prime has fewer than n crossing. Then there's a big contradiction. Why? This number is an invariant for the chance. Right. So, so first of all, um, we have this number, right? And then secondly, we have that for every diagram, this is true. So if I have another diagram that has fewer than n crossings, let's say m, then we're actually going to get that m of d prime minus m of d prime, which is invariant, is less than 4n. Okay. Because, because equality minus 
might not be as short with other diagrams, but uh, these inequalities are always true. So I can still get, I can definitely get this statement, which is the contradiction to this being the invariant. Okay. Um, so for the last thing, so I'm just going to take a few minutes. to show you a cute proof of why I can, why alternating implies these con this condition. Okay, when you think about the little, like, where does this come from? So, um, alternating reduced diagram. crossing and let's say one resolution one particular choice let's say this one ends up with so somehow so how I get a graph is I connect these circles with this right somehow after traveling through a lot through the diagram it comes back and touches itself okay um, <coughs> So let's just follow where this boundary goes. I go over, under, and then, so how many, uh, so like this has to be over again. I'm going to resolve it all in the same time. 